So you, so you you are good to go, sir. Can you share your screen? Okay, we have to start immediately. Yes, yes sir, you can. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe Nikhil, uh, go ahead with uh, sir's introduction because we just started recording, right? So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, Mr. Sir Siddharth Lavane, sir, will be joining us today, and he will is the main speaker, and he will be talking about. Uh, he will be discussing about what is a Leni stupa and the subtle differences between Leni and a K. And Mr. S uh, sir Siddharth Lavane, sir, has done his uh, bachelor's of technology in chemical engineering. After that. He did his MA in Pali. After that, we, he is an MPSC 1991 batch pass, after which he served as a director in industrial safety and health department under the government of Maharashtra. He has also presented research papers like relevance of Buddha's teaching in industrial safety, Bhopal gas tragedy, tragedy and the eightfold path, Buddhism in Kolapur in, in ancient times and Buddhism in Vidarbha. Thank you Siddharth sir for joining us today. Okay, um, thank you all and good morning. On this uh, occasion of Jest Purnima, I convey my good wishes to all of you. So I'll start my presentation immediately. Okay. So can you share, see my screen, please? Yes, sir. We can see this. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, let us come directly to the topic because I have been allotted only forty-five minutes. So we'll go accordingly, and you can tell me in between ki whether I, I'm going faster or slower, or you want to uh, say give some suggestions. Uh, definitely, um, those are welcome. You can tell me in between, right? So. Uh, we'll be talking about Buddhist art and architecture, right? So, uh, mainly art and architecture covers two part. Eight minute. Okay. So there are two types of uh, rock cut. Uh, um, this Buddhist art and architecture that is rock cut and structural sites. Then we'll be uh, discussing four places of veneration, and uh, we'll express the gratitude. Be because of which, because of whom we come to uh, uh, study this all Buddhist sites. So, what is their role and how they have brought us this all uh, Buddhist sites and art and architecture for our veneration? So, whatever we are studying today, not as a technical part, um, actually, but we'll see in the Dhamma concern, right? So when we talking about the Dhamma and walking on the path of, uh, path of the Buddha, so that time how it is related to our um, uh, see uh, veneration and these Buddhist sites, are, how they are, those are important, that part we'll see, right? So, so there are two types, just I have said you. So rock cut and structural. So for example, if you Think about the rock cut architecture, those are Kaneri caves, Bedseleni, Karle, Vaje, Guntupalle. Guntupalle is uh, the combination of rock cut as well as structural. So you will feel, uh, you, I will show you the difference. What is the uh, difference between the rock cut architecture and structural architecture? Okay. And structural, you come uh, uh, to the Sanchi Stupa, Nala Supara Stupa, Bhatti Prolu, Amravati. I heard that ki you have studied. Um, uh, South Indian architecture also. So that's why I mentioned the names uh, of South India, that is Bhatti Prolu and Amravati. So you will understand the difference between the uh, two uh, types of architecture. Okay. So, so what is Leni? Leni, when uh, you are talking about the Leni, is a Lavanya. In Marathi, it is Lavanya. That is the beauty in the rocks. Okay. So Leni is the rock cut architecture. And Leni are not caves. Many times the word is used as a rock uh, caves, that is Ajanda caves, Elora caves, uh, like that, Bedse caves. But we should not use the word caves because caves are the natural cavities, you know. The, whatever the formation of uh, these um, um, cavities or the shelters inside the uh, jungle or in the, in the mountains, so those are caves. 
but here we are studying the art of the rock that is lavanya that is the leni so this is the difference between leni and the caves so we should always say leni only so the archaeological survey of india uh, talks about the census so you know, according to that there are 1500 leni in india those are rock cut architectures 1500 and out of that 1200 lenis are in maharashtra why in maharashtra we will let us see and out of 1200 1000 leni are buddhist lenis right so what is the reason the reason is the basalt rock that rock is very good for the rock rock cut sculptures best for uh, architecture it is lasting longer the sculptures are lasting longer right so chirang tithatu dhammo what is the meaning chirang tithatu dhammo means let the dhamma live longer or stay longer that is the purpose of carving the uh, architecture buddhist architecture in the rock and hence the getting the merits to the donor for a long time as long as one is donating or creating the rocket architecture the person who is taking the advantage of that rock cut uh, uh, that particular site he will meditate there he will consume water he will have a um, um, veneration to the monks monks will stay there and there will be a dhamma discussion also so whatever the merits earn out of that that will reach to the donor this is the concept of making the rock cut architecture by the donors right so where are the locations okay so mainly on the trade routes that is vyapari marga then the distance between the two uh, rock cut architectures is about 30 to 40 kilometers why 30 to 40 kilometers because that that time the traveling distance of a person uh, in a conventional vehicles like bullock carts or manual walking that was about in the range of 30 to 40 kilometers in a day so that one person when is traveling all over the day he can reach to the another lane and have a shelter specifically for the traders right so and then the location is at the height not in the flat surface you find any lane not in the ground surface but at, at the elevated level okay and uh, again one criteria is there that is the lane is not too far or not too close from the town why the reason is if the town is very close to the lane the monks who are meditating there or reciting their study the dhamma study they will get disturbed number one if the towns are far away then what will happen the monks has to go for the uh, making a uh, arms round right getting the food pindapath so it will be more un- inconvenient for them the, the location therefore it is not too far nati dura and nati santi this is the criteria of the location of the lane these are four criteria right so uh, in maharashtra uh if you see the map of the maharashtra the most of the dots lines that blue dots are the locations of the leni so you will find all the leni maximum leni in the left side towards the sayadri ranges as we have earlier really said ke uh, sayadri ranges rock is good for the rock cut architecture okay so this is the um, uh, this uh, it's a enlarged picture so see the left side so this junnar then lonawala pune kala uh, this uh, gandharpale shirwar lohare satara chipun karat these all are having lot of leni lot of leni because of the quality of the rocks and this entire lane is around the uh, trade routes so i earlier said that the, the traders used to travel on that trade on that route and meanwhile they used to take the shelters of those leni as well as listen the dhamma donate to the monks and on the next morning they may proceed for the their next journey that was the basic concept the same thing happens in the um, um uh, what you call in the south india you have seen uh, the south india structures also so 
तो इफ यू लुक एट द हैदराबाद एंड जस्ट बिलो पोर्शन इज द आंध्र प्रदेश तो हियर यू फाइंड एन नंबर ऑफ बुद्धिस्ट आर्किटेक्चर दैट इज ऑफकोर्स स्ट्रक्चर आर्किटेक्चर दीज आर नॉट लेनी बट आई एम वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज द लोकेशन इज ऑन द ट्रेड रूट दीज ऑल आर द बुद्धिस्ट साइट विच आर ऑन ट्रेड रूट नाउ यू विल आस्क मी वेर इज द ट्रेड रूट नाउ फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट कॉर्नर here there is a river that is a krishna river so the, from the krishna river is traveling uh, is moving from this side from the nagarjun konda this 17 is nagarjun konda and this all all sites passing and uh, passing through all the sites it goes to the uh, ocean so here is very very interesting that the trading works or the transportation of goods was on the Uh, on the water surface so this is again a very typical uh, uh, criteria of the location of the buddhist sites ha now who carved the leni the important question is who carved the leni so there are three uh, uh, three donors or carving persons those are king the merchants and the monks the so king so you know the, the king ashoka has a patronage to the buddhism and he has ordered to carve the lenis and so many stupas 84000 stupas are old uh, and uh, the relics were distributed accordingly he has ordered to carve the most of the buddhist site then the merchants just to, we are talking we are talking about the merchants the so merchants were traveling in that direction in that uh, trade routes they used to donate a massive amount so that they uh, their stay will be matlab um, protected as well as the they will listen the dhamma from the monks this was the purpose of donation from the merchants and of course the monks the monks who were staying already there so they used to get the donations right so the, those donations also were used for the construction and carving of the leni further so it is it was not a job of some uh, 10 years or 20 years okay this leni has to be constructed uh, sorry excavated or ca- carved uh, and then it will be used it used to go for the years of hundreds and hundreds years so because it is a very very tough job a very very skillful job so it took even this kaneri leni of mumbai took 700 years to construct total right <clears throat> so now what are the features of the leni okay so when you see the leni what is to be seen there so first is a chetiya ghara then vihara then stupa then paintings paintings consist of episodes of the life of the buddha then jataka stories also they have then sculptures symbols animals and torana also torana means the uh, the big uh, that uh, banner banner like structure at the end of the at uh, the entrance of the stupa gate just if you uh, visit the um, sanchi stupa na you will find the four main gates on four sides and the four uh, on the above the gates there is a banner like structure where the stories of the buddha lives are carved those are called in torana then the names of the donors and the, even the images of the donors are there in the leni then you find the inscriptions you find the arch that is a very very typical arch of the buddhist architecture and most important is the water management you know water management is a why it is important because these monks were staying in the higher uh, uh, higher level okay on the uh, little uh, Uh, what you call mounts or you can say mountain but some uh, higher level right so the main criteria was how to preserve water for which is which can be used entire for the entire year so there were three uh, three type three options there that is rain water harvesting well and river if first two options were not there then third option used to be that that is river okay then Uh, now just we have uh, so see uh, see in the criteria as no so we'll go one by one right uh, so first is the chetiya ghara 
ठीक है सो चेतीय घर मेन मेन आर्किटेक्चर इज द स्टूपा दैट स्टूपा मेनली रिप्रेजेंट्स द बुद्ध और अरहन आदर तो मोस्टली द द स्टूपा इज बुद्ध ओनली सो व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ चेतीय घर सो वेनरेशन टू द बुद्ध मीन्स वेनरेशन टू द स्टूप मेडिटेशन रिसाइटेशन एंड स्टडी राइट देन देर हेज टू बी पदक्षिणा पथ सरकम बैम्बुलेशन पाथ दट इज पदक्षिणा अराउंड द स्तूप देन एपसाइडल प्लान एपसाइडल प्लान मीन्स गोइंग फ्रॉम वन साइड एंड कमिंग बैक फ्रॉम द अदर साइड इन अ यू शेप दैट एपसाइडल प्लान आई विल शो द पिक्चर लेटर देन पिलर्स यू सी the those are square pillars those are eight angle pillars there are 16 angle pillars which go up to 64 ages okay so the 64 ages pillar is almost a circle and you know the quality how much what must be the quality of that uh, pillar how much uh, skill must have used by the artist to build up the 64 ages so that is to be seen in the chetiya gharo the roof of the chaitya ghara is of two type that is vaulted roof and flat roof uh, then arch arch is a very typical uh, uh, structure then inscriptions and then polish art these are the things which are in the chaitya ghara okay see this is the chaitya ghara so you feel, you find here the um, uh, stupa here then you find the pillars these pillars are eight eight face uh, pillars then there is a uh, apsidal plan apsidal plans means the person is going from this side any person ek minute okay the person uh, enters if there is a meditation going on and the monks are sitting and any upasaka is coming to venerate the stupa or venerate the buddha they he will enter from the left side and he will take a circle and he will come back from the right side the arrow is not coming i don't know why ha huh. okay so arrow is this one okay so here he will uh, go from here he he will go inside and from the back side he will come back without disturbing the meditators and the because then we see the uh, vaulted roof vaulted roof there are two types of roof i said so this is the vaulted roof and uh, that is u shape inverted u shape and uh, the uh, the roof has the ribs of wooden uh, wooden material then these wooden material ribs are also having the inscriptions and 2500 years even after that the inscription are still there this wood is also there this is the picture of bazeleni so see the beauty of this um, chetiya ghar and again the, this is the arch now this arch what how the arch is taken in the buddhist architecture so uh, when uh, king bimisara donated the bamboo grove na that uh, uh, veluvan to the buddha no so that entire veluvan uh, was full of bamboos right so they have made the entry of all the entry bomb entry like that ki both the sides of bamboo uh, join together at the top and that structure became this arch so this is the finding of the scholars so i i accept that but uh, concretely i have not found any uh, written evidence about that but that arch is uh, definitely has a re- resemblance with that uh, bamboo arch so this has to be seen then we have we can see the uh, uh, circumambulance path here and we see, uh, see the stupa now we will see the soup stupa separately okay this is again the vaulted roof uh, very beautiful vaulted roof with the wooden ribs okay and this is the flat roof of chaitya very small chaitya guru with very small monastery so in the uh, when the, there was there is to be very less donations and very less uh, responses from the um, what you call uh, traders so that time uh, the flat roof uh, chaitya gura chaitya gara used to be uh, constructed right and you see the condition of the stupa we will not say anything about it but the condition is 
in front of you so this is the picture of the um, lady from the near kolapur area okay so this is one of the chaitya ghar this is the apsidal plan i am talking about so apsidal plans is always in the u shape form so here now this is constructed this is not the rock cut this is the constructed we find it in the south india so the person is going like this and he will take a round here is the stupa now you can't see the it is broken now and it will he will come back from the uh, right side it will he will come back so this is the apsidal plan then vihara generally we are very much confused about the vihara so what is vihara so vihara is the place of residence of the monk vihara generally we we uh, we talk about the buddha vihara buddha vihara word is not in a pali literature uh, may be noted because buddha vihara is the is the uh, what we call today that buddha vihara is in the city places why it is in the city places because for the recitation of the buddha's teachings or the listening the dhamma we cannot go to the leni because nobody is there so what is the option of that so we construct a, a monastery or a vihara in the, in the within the township and that township vihara is called the buddha vihara but as long as lenis are concerned this vihara means the Uh, such type of residence place of the monk so on the left side you see the vihara in the rock cut so here you find the veranda also and these empty boxes are um, used to be filled with the uh, wooden frames with the doors and windows frames right and on the right side there is a vihara of the uh, structural that is the boxes again that is a uh, made by the brick work okay so this is how the uh, the difference between the vihara and chetyagra uh, we have found and the buddha vihara is the latest term uh, not in the uh, pali literature that we must know now this this is the stupa when go we go to the vihara uh, sorry leni we must know what is the uh, uh, what is the stupa and what are those parts of the stupa see the stupa is the main foundation of the stupa is the medhi that is the seal that represent the seal then above that there is a rounded shape that is the anda that is the indicate symbol of the samadhi in between there is a vedika you know it's a compound like structure so that is called the uh, design that is the vedika and above that there is a harmika that in that represents the pragna that is the wisdom supreme wisdom and then above that there is a chatra the chatra is hold by this uphold by yashti that is the stick in between so on whom we hold the chatra by the supreme person or a king so this is how this the, the entire structure is the representation of buddha and above the buddha there is a chatra the chatra is of two types either it is uh, connected to the roof Uh, or it is made uh, here it is constructed by the uh, by using the wood wooden frame right so this is chatra uh, here we can say in the constructed uh, or structural stupa this vedika we can see we can see anda we can see medhi we can see this um, uh, harmika we can see the yashti and the chatra also the the stupa at the chait uh, this uh, nagpur's uh, diksha bhumi na it is a master example of the stupa uh, of this kind the entire structure is based on the this all the criteria as you will find there medhi anda harmika and chatra so that is the masterpiece okay here the chatra is stuck to the uh, roof so that i was telling you in the earlier case it was a wooden chatra okay so type of stupa so in dhammapad uh, athakatha 195 here the stupa and the type of stupa are explained here so that is referring to the mahaparinibbana sutta so in mahaparinibbana sutta buddha has explained this 
चतारो तुपार है तो वट अज तो चतारो सुपार है सो देर आर ही इज ही इज टेलिंग अबाउट द बुद्ध इज टेलिंग अबाउट द फोर टाइप्स ऑफ द स्तूप दैट इज नंबर वन इज द शारीरिक स्तूप उद्देशिक स्तूप देन पारिभोगिक स्तूप एंड वोटिव स्तूप so you must have understood by the name only so what is tarika stupa so where the buddha's relics are placed in the stupa or the stupa is constructed on the sarika of the buddha or the relics of the buddha those stupa are called the sarika stupa if you want to give example you can give the example of the sachi stupa this constructed on the uh, sarika datu of the buddha okay then comes to the uddesika stupa the name indicates the commemoration uddesika so where the basic uh, what you called very very important uh, episode has happened so such places are uh, aren't such places the uddesika stupa is constructed right then paribhogika stupa the paribhogika word means the things or the articles used by the buddha himself for example it may be chivar it may be uh, bhiksha patra right begging bowl so on that if there is a, any stupa has constructed that stupa is called the paribhogik stupa and apart from that there are many stupas just like uh, kaneri caves kaneri leni sorry kaneri leni then uh, bhaje leni and so many other leni there the stupas are none of the above but again those are representing the buddha those stupa are called the votive stupa these are the four examples we will see uh, one by one uh, sorry clearly so we have given the example or votive stupa paribhogik stupa you understood okay paribhogik stupa i have not given the example uh, nala supara stupa has been constructed on the begging bowl of the buddha so that is a paribhogik stupa okay so we must remember this okay then comes to the paintings so paintings so so many paintings aspects are there in the buddhist architecture so if you go to ajanta you will find you go to the uh, uh, this uh, bhaje leni no bhaje leni we, we don't have this is pitar khora leni then uh, bag leni this middle picture is the bag leni so what we found in the uh, paintings are basically the uh, birth renunciation enlightenment and jataka stories are painted and natural colors are used and which are still beautiful after 2500 500 years still those are beautiful and still research is going on what is what must be the composition of those uh, colors and how they are painted but the still they are not able to get the exact uh, source what is the material and they have used the right side you are seeing the um, leni no that is pitar khora leni that picture on the right side so they in a very very bad shape now i think it must have collapsed we have visited this leni up before uh, about 12 years and those so those beautiful pictures were still there and the entire leni was about to collapse but do nobody was uh, taking care of that i think it has been lost so far i think nothing is left there okay so very uh, i feel very bad about it okay then in leni we find symbols so we must know the symbols so uh, on the left side this is the tri ratna symbol right this is the circle that is the chakra and there are three sticks here on the above those are tri ratna so this is tri ratna symbol this is bull this, this represents the patham jhana of the siddhartha gautama not the buddha when buddha then siddhartha gautama was a child of seven years that time he uh, he meditated in the farm so that uh, that is the symbol then this bull represents that symbol because he was uh, there in the farm and there were a lot of uh, this farmers and bulls were there so this is the representation and you find torana and you know torana so lot of symbols are there elephant elephant represents the birth of the buddha horse represents the renunciation of the buddha right lion represents the 
Buddha's teachings, lions roars, Siha Garjana, right? So these are the symbols. Then a lot of Jatakas are carved on the Torana. So these are things to be uh, seen in the Lene. Now, one of the criteria of Lene is the, uh, the mentioning of the donors. So those donors, we have uh, uh, talked about the donors, you know, they used to give the, their uh, information in the form of their pictures also, images. On the left side, now you find the pair of uh, this couple. He is one of the Sreshti, that is the king merchant. Of that area, he has donated this care. This is Kudaleni, and uh, these are the donors. And they have mentioned who who are they, their family members, their son, daughter, their names are inscribed on the right side of the wall, which is not in picture. We can see later in the different picture uh, at the different Leni. Okay, see, so these are the inscriptions. So what is the importance of inscriptions? So let us see. A very, very precious thing we, we have in our Leni. So uh, Leni are the mainly main, made by the donors. So what is saying in a left Leni? See, these are the um, language is Pali. And the Lipi is the Brahmi. You, you understood it, I think. So, Denu Kakata Vaniya Gamasa Prabodhana. It is written in a very, very small, small, small and few letters. But see the beauty. The first line says the Denu Kakata. Means directly we are, we are taken to the age of the, that, uh, that, re, um, that year of the, uh, when the Denu Kakata was there, alive. Who was the Enukate Kakata? We should find. Then Vaniya Gamasa. Here we can identify the name of the town. And what he has donated? Thabo Danang. So he has donated the Thabo, means the pillar. So it, this inscription is from the uh, Karleleni. You must have uh, identified it. So from such a very few letters, you can entire you can understand the entire history. And again, this is the Pathar ki Lakir, right? So it is again forever, as far as possible, forever. So that is the uh, importance of the inscription. We'll, uh, we'll see another inscription. See, this is the Girnar. Uh, sorry, it is not Girnar. It is Barabar Leni. So it is in Bihar. And it is supposed to be the earliest Leni donated by the uh, King Asuka. So here it says the uh, that's uh, Devanang Pia Pia Dasi Lajina. We will not go through the uh, uh, reading uh, word by word. So he says uh, the king uh, Asoka says the Devanang Pia Pia Lajina. Lajina means Raja. So he says I am coming here. Dudas Dudas Wasabi Wasabi Setani. So Ian Kuba, I am donating to the uh, 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 some person, okay, not uh, not a Buddhist monk, and they are they are uh, Ajivika. So the, the the name is destroyed by the antisocial elements. We can say so. What we can get from such in uh, such letters? See, so name of the king, name of the donor, for what purpose uh, it has been donated to whom it has been donated. And when he has come, so we can understand the dating. So, Baravya Varshacha Nantar, after the coronation of the 12 years. So, he came here and he is donating this Leni to the Ajivika. So, such a beautiful information is given in this uh, inscription. Okay. Now, we will directly give the example of Bhatti Prabhu Stupa in the South India. You have studied South India, therefore, we can have a little look about the uh, structural stupa. Here we find three caskets of the relics and which are matlab, full of uh, inscriptions. So what we get here, the detailed information of the donors and the original relics of the Buddha. And the inscription says that those are the relics of the Buddha at who has donated it and why he has donated it. In uh, this, all the information is mentioned in the inscriptions. On right side, you can see the inscription of the crystal hexagon. 
So this is what you call in a quartz, right? In the uh, in other language, it's called the quartz. It's very very hard material. Right? It's just like a glass. And you you think that ki how it must be difficult to write on that, inscribe on that, and the 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 entire this hexagonal uh, crystal was inscribed with the teachings of the Buddha. And in the other um, uh, inscriptions, the no, names of the donor and his family members were uh, given in that inscriptions. So that is to be seen. So see the inscriptions importance. So we get the history, we get the dating, we get the name of the king, we can get the dynasty, we can get the name of the monk. School of Buddhism, which it was, we can get any place of name. So many things we can get from the inscription. It may be small uh, or it may be big. That is a different issue. And the, thanks to the Britishers, thanks to the Britishers, they have preserved it. So I will give you the example how they have preserved it. We'll see later, but just I wanted to say. So Girnar Leni, you know, they were uh, near Girnar uh, inscriptions. So there was a, they were constructing the roads, you know, and the civil engineer came across the one stone and while blasting the stone to make the road, he found something written on the stone and they were, he was so much curious about and he was very much compassionate. Are, this is something very precious. I should preserve it. They have not blasted the stone and they have changed their path of the road and the, the entire um, that uh, inscriptions were protected and not only that they have made the shelter on that they have made the shelter on the rock and uh, pleased to say that those are the Ashokan inscription 14 inscriptions thanks to Britishers so again uh, about the uh, this uh, Leni so arch and windows we can see as we have said this arch is the formation of the bamboo arch uh, from taken from the bamboo arc and here we see the window this purpose of this window is such that the the uh, the light coming from the window directly falls on the stupa and the meditator sitting in front of the uh, meditation uh, in front of the stupa will not get the get disturbed so that is the purpose of this window uh, in, within the arch this window is now reconstructed it was not like that. It must be something very beautiful. Okay. Now, polish art. A very beautiful aspect of the Buddhist architecture. The polish art, it is specially is famous for the Mauryan art. That is called the Mauryan polish. On the left side, we can see the, it is just like a mirror. This is this polish of the Girnar Leni. You have seen the Girla, Girnar Leni? Okay, I will show you. Yes. This Girnar Leni on the left side, you can see. So this is a complete a granite stone, right? And the granite stone is very, very hard, very hard. And on that granite stone walls, it was a polish, the polish was made. And that polish is still, today it's like that only. Just we can see the face. It is so beautiful. How hard work must, uh, must have taken by the artist. On the, on the right side, see the polish on the lion's capital. This is the original lion's capital. It is kept in the museum of Sarnath. So see the polish. And the, this polish has been tried again and again afterwards. After uh, uh, Mauryan dynasty, it is lost. Okay. Now they are the people and the artists are trying to get this policy, uh, this polish again. But they are not successful. So that was the beauty and that was the art of the uh, Mauryan uh, dynasty. Then water management, I have just uh, told about that rainwater harvesting, how it is done, then rivers and wells uh, that we will see one by one. So the rainwater harvesting uh, is uh, on the um, on the lanes are in the two types that is Kodhi and Kodhi. So Kodhi means the water storage, rock cut water storage. Okay. And this, that water is used for the general washing purpose that is called Kodi because there is no cover on it that there it is called the Kodi. And on the bottom side, you can see the water storage, which is called Kodi. It is for the drinking water. 
here the uh, roof of the uh, that uh, water storage has been broken so uh, it is easy to see that how it must be and the, of course these kodis and podis were donated and then uh, we find their names uh, written uh, in the nearby uh, area of the laning see this is one of the example of the rain water harvesting we see that ki at that time is 2500 years before how the rain water harvesting was so beautiful see the art okay now if you see the example of bhandara leni this is near the lonawada and uh, it's a very beautiful leni uh, the, the sant tukaram used to sit there and meditate and here he found that uh, this stupa he found and this stupa he used to address as a uh, what you call der uh, panduranga so actually he was venerating buddha he was meditating in front of the buddha that is this stupa and he used to address him as a panduranga that was his uh, uh, that is his was faith i think okay so and that in near that stupa there is a well that well is giving the water throughout the year this leni and the it is on the um, very elevated height it is on the dongar it's on the hill and the, in the summer season there is a um, water starvation in the village which is on the ground ground level okay and the um, villagers go here to get the water to fetch the water from this well see the beauty okay so this is all about the lenis and part of the lenis and the other uh, part that is uh, chatu somejani ani thanani this is also again a part of the veneration a part of the uh, buddhist art and architecture so if you think about the mahaparinibbana sutta most of us have already studied this mahaparinibbana sutta so when the buddha declared ki uh, ananda now will i will pass away i will take a parinibbana after 3 months at that time ananda was very much uh, venerable ananda was very much in uh, worry and he was very sad so he was shocked actually he was crying so he asked to the buddha um, bante ki after you are passing away who where we should go he, he says ki ananda ke uh, you, you don't worry so there is a dhamma of course in my presence dhamma is already there so yo dhammang pasati wo mamang pasati wo mamang jo so mamang pasati so dhamma pasati so he used to say ki there is uh, no other uh, no need of any uh, 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 what you call to so, uh, uttaradhikari uh, there is no need of having the uttaradhikari so my dhamma is my uttaradhikari so you have to follow the uh, dhamma and you will get all all the teachings what i wanted to what i have given to you right but again uh, uh, bante anand asks him ke when i we want to experience your presence or we want to get the inspiration then what i what we should do so bhagavato panamayan bhante achayen na labhisam manobhavaniya bhikkhu darsanaya how you hum kaise darshan lenge aapka how you how will experience you so there uh, the the buddha answers him agamissanti ko ananda what he says oh ananda so these sadha people those who are having the faith in the dhamma in the buddha those people those bhikkhu bhikkhuniya upasaka upase upasika yo where he agamissanti agamissanti where they should go they should go at the four places where idan tathagato jato here the tathagata has born idan tathagato anuttaram samma sambodhi abhisambuddho here tathagata has attended the enlightenment okay then idan tathagatenan anuttaram dhamma chakka pavatitam so here the dhamma chakka pavatan has been done by the buddha and lastly the four places idan tathagato anupadise sa dhamma nibban dhatu ya parinibhuto so these are the four places ananda where the um, uh, 
where the uh, upasaka upasika bhikkhu bhikkhuna must visit and they will get certainly the inspiration they will get the samvejaniya samvejanam thanani from this places so ekeshi ananda those who ananda chetiya charikam ahindanta pasana chitta how they move around the four places ahindanta pasana chitta they should be very prasanna very happy and kalan karisati they pass the time they they move around so sabbe te sugati labhisanti they will find the emancipation so these are the guidelines of the buddha and that is the reason we are we must go to these places to experience the buddha's existence so this has been told by the buddha in mahaparinibbana sutta the mahaparinibbana sutta is so beautiful so many things are given here in the mahaparinibbana mahaparinibbana sutta one should definitely study this so So these are the four places uh, first is the lumbini this is second is the okay 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 we'll go one by one this is lumbini idang tathagato jato and here there is a uh, ashokan pillar where the inscriptions are written where the asking asoka says ki dear here the tathagata has born the siddhartha has born and because of that because of this place uh, importance of this place i am uh, relaxing the tax on this uh, this uh, villagers whatever tax i am exempting totally so this is the place of veneration this is the place called lumbini ido tathagato jato then second place is idang tathagato anuttaram dhamma samma sambodhi abhisambuddho here the tathagata and it attended the enlightenment so you can see the bodhi tree the, this is one of the place of veneration the third is the saranat that is idham tathagate anuttaram dhamma chakka pavartitam so here tathagata has said the dhamma chakka in motion and buddha when he was giving the dhamma chakka to the, to those five sages his five companions the moment in the he is giving the discourse and during the discourse only that kondinya got enlightenment we during the discourse only on the same night like and, and the buddha says now this dhamma chakka has been set in motion and nobody can stop it na devena na marena na samanena va bhamanena kena chi lokasmi i don't find any person in the world in the world entire world in the loka who can stop this dhamma chakka these teachings of the buddha now no dar set in the motion and now it it cannot be stopped or it cannot be a oh, pativatya it cannot be reverted also so this is very very important place and here the there is a cheti uh, this is the stupa has been constructed so you have understood this stupa is the udesika stupa because the very very important occasion has occurred here so this is the udesika stupa and the of course last is the idang tathagato parinibhuto here the patha tathagata has taken the parinibbana so tathagatas paha parinibbana is called as a mahaparinibbana passing away passing away of the any arhat person is called parinibbana and when the buddha passes away is called the mahaparinibbana here there are two places here here he uh, just uh, passed away and then here the his uh, body was cremated so this place is just 2 km away this is called the ramabhara stupa i think we should, everyone i suggest that everyone has to be has to go there and meditate and i think uh, Uh, the entire mahaparinibbana sutta has to be recited here and not only recitation but to be understood so many things uh, I, i i said ki how the buddha's body was uh, cremated there it was not getting ignited why it was not getting ignited then uh, how the the pyre was ignited and then how it was extinguished 
then there was a fight between the kings to get the ashes of the buddha those are very beautiful things are given in the mahaparinibbana sutta so uh, one must recite here and main thing you must meditate here when you meditate here na the experience is very different so buddha has said so you have to get the yathabhuta dhyana dasana you have to go and take the experience that that is very very special experience you get here so these are all about the um chatur samajani ani thana ani four places then let's just go through the uh, ashokan inscriptions we'll go very fast i have told you earlier the the how grateful these peoples were uh, british peoples so they have protected our monuments or uh, all buddhist sites so the this uh, rock cut arc uh, slabs pillars and excavated walls you find the ashokan scroll inscriptions then in the pillars uh, what we find the pillars are you know, made of the varanasi stone that is called the chunar chunar name means the name of the village from where the stones are uh, taken away and then those were polished by the mauryan polish and this is these all the uh, pillars are the monolithic monolithic stone that is a single piece that is the beauty of the ashokan pillars <clears throat> we will not discuss about much detail about ashokan pillars because it's a entire altogether is a different uh, subject so this is uh, when we talk uh, when you uh, talk about the chatu samajani ani thanani so chetiya charikam ahinanta pasanna chitta so when we walk on the four places of the veneration we are supposed to do certain things what happens you know we go there most of our colleagues we are most most of our faithful people we have a lot of respect about the buddha's teachings buddha's places but uh, most of the times they don't know how to venerate the buddha how to take a parikrama or how to uh, go place to place and what to do there so these are the guidelines some of the guidelines i would like to share with you just like uh, while going to this four places of veneration you must have the list of episodes and discourses that is the sutta so sutta indicates every sutta starts with the some uh, place right ekang samayang bhagava savitya viharati anath pindaka saram for example so here we see that ki the sutta is given in the uh, anath pindaka sa monastery right jetavan monastery like that if you make the list of the suttas and when you go there na so you can recite that sutta there on that particular place some suttas are given at the varanasi some some suttas are given in the different places right uh, so accordingly if you prepare the list of the sutta and their meaning so it will be a beautiful uh, veneration to the buddha then you should have a dhamma lipi chart you can read out all the inscriptions at least some inscriptions you can read out so the charts are available very much with uh, uh, pali students as well as you can get on internet also so if you have that so you can read the inscriptions also you distributes the responsibility of suppose there are 10 people going for the uh, uh, dhamma yatra or uh, venerations so you give the you distribute the suttas and tell them Okay, you explain this sutta and what is the significance of sutta what are the teachings of the buddha and have a discussion sessions there then visit visit museums most of the people don't visit no but museum is the such a place that that museum every sculpture takes you to the that age you know you go directly to the age of 2000 years back so museum visiting is the must is a compulsory part of the veneration then you should have uposatha or you should have a limited food why limited food you know because we are going at a very uh, what you call very different place very inconvenient place so most of the times we feel very much uh, uh, unpleasant uh, way or we, we get irritated what not getting the food but uh, just we have to ignore that because we came for a very very special purpose 
So have a uposat is a very good thing. If not, then just ignore it. Then you have to meditate at uh, you know, according to the place and according to the significance of the stupa. Okay. So generally we meditate for uh, anapansati. If you are knowing the vipassana, we can vip uh, meditate vipassana. Have the photographs of the places and write a report. So you know what is the importance of the writing report when you go through the life of the Huyan uh, Sangbante. So those are important. And these reports are not, um, matlab, it should not be like a researcher or like that, but whatever you you experience there, what you have seen there, how you uh, observed it, the things. So that is good enough for your uh, future when you again refer it now you get that joy of uh, reading those uh, reports uh, and venerating the four places, you get the joy. So this is all about the Chatu Swami Janiya Thama. So now see, uh, we have come to, to the final stage, that is the uh, gratitude part. So we have seen this mound. So this is the mound observed by the Alexander Cunningham. So this was in the middle of the 18th, well, uh, 19th century, that is 1840, 1850s around. And he was not knowing what it is. He's, it was not his business, what, what is to do, what to do with this. But see their greatness, no? So they have made the research on that. They found all the inscriptions here by James Princeps. They have read it and they have re reconstructed this stupa. And the entire history, they have mentioned properly. Now the stupa is like this because of this person, because of this Alexander Cunningham. This Alexander Cunningham was very, very expert in reading the Yuan Sang diary. Then you will say, why? What is the expertness in that? The Yuan Sang diary was written in the 7th century. That is, okay, 7th century, right? 640, uh, about six, 640. Right? And the Yuan Sang stayed in India for 17 years and he has written entire entire his journey the locations the details of the structures and that was in a Chinese language and the Chinese language he has measured the distances by his put uh, or the measurement of Li because he was he was a monk no he was not the scholar or he came from uh, um, from China unofficially because it was he was not permitted to go outside the country but as a faith as he was a monk and he was to venerate the buddha and is the buddhist places so he came to india and he has made the proper documentation and because of that only we are able to see all these places today uh, whatever we are seeing the birthplace of the buddha and the enlightenment place of the buddha and uh, so his uh, Savatthi, Savatthi was not there. It was totally a flat surface having the trees and the mounds and jungle and forest. This person, Alexander Cunningham, has gone through the diary. He was architect, right? So he has studied it. It was in a different language. Then he was. it was translated in uh, Sanskrit and then it was translated in the uh, English language. Okay. So by translation again and again and seeing the diary written 1500 year before and by that time, see how much changes in the, uh, uh, what you call, uh, environment and reverse directions and mountains uh, and that deterioration of mountains and how he must have located those places. This was a great, great job. Uh, just hats off this person and then he once he found one place, no, he started finding again and again the, most of the places which are uh, now the world heritage, like uh, Sachi Stupa and all that. The credit goes to uh, Sir uh, Alexander Cunningham. Then he found that ki these things are being stolen. He has been destroyed. So he immediately informed to the government, British government, and he, he found here the Archaeological Survey of India. So he is called the father of ASI, Archaeological Survey father. Okay. So such a great person, such a great person. Unfortunately, 
nobody celebrates his uh, any birth anniversary not even archaeological survey of india don't they don't publish or they don't appreciate i don't know why maybe because of they are only uh, protected and uh, discovered this all buddhist sites that is a different part but is a great person so these are the work and of course if this person uh, bante yansang would not have been there we would not find anything as a evidence and the buddha was till in the middle of the 19th century buddha was the mythological figure as buddhism was completely lost and because of alexander cunningham excavations on the basis of diary of shiansa the entire thing the buddha was treated that proved as a human being because of this person only now this one more personality that is uh, james prince he was actually the numismatics and metallurgic expert right so he used to the um, he used to work in the mint uh, you know coins making uh, factory right and he was expert in metallurgy and till in that during that uh, during his uh, uh, services he found that there are so many read uh, languages so many inscriptions written here and there in the rocks in the uh, in the coins also uh, ancient coin he used to study and he found that ki okay, this is something very very interesting so he spent his 8 years he was must he mm. must be around 20 years <laughs> my time is up okay is it uh, should i continue so you go ahead you go ahead okay thank you so what this person was just 20 years old 20 or 22 years old and he was mad with these inscriptions so for 8 years he used to continuously go all the archaeological sites and he used to sit there he used to compare the uh, coins with the letters of written in the uh, inscribed in the uh, rocks and finally at the at the total 8 years efforts he could find out this is the brahmi inscription and the first letter was that first letter used to be the uh, brahmi is uh, that devanang piya piya dasi laja so this devanang piya piya dasi laja and then he uh, what is the written in he has come here then he has donated this and that so he has started publishing his papers uh, in the journal of asiatic society of bengal see he has made the publication he was secretary of uh, that uh, yeah he was secretary uh, of uh, asiatic society of bengal and through that society his articles were going all over the world in the buddhist countries and he was asking to all the people who is this devanang piya piya dasi laja and nobody was saying and in india he used to ask the indian scholars so called indian scholars you understand what i mean so they used to say there is no such king there is no such king was uh, the in indian history so the everything was blank so at the same time this person the other person this was you you identified it right is uh, t w rish davids he was working in uh, uh, sri lanka right Nine and one more person I forgot his name. So they he this uh, Rishkevis was the civil servant there, and being a civil servant, he has to he used to resolve the problems of the Sri Lanka. And one Anuradhapura inscriptions he used to handle the dispute. And uh, there were many religious uh, disputes there, and he has handled it. And for to handle those problems, he understood Pali, right? he understood he learned pali he learned sinhalese and he came to know these are this devanang piya piya dasi laja is nothing but the arkinga ashoka because he has gone through the mahavamsa literature which is available in the sri lanka okay see the efforts these people these people are christians these are britishers and how much they were affected uh, they were affectionate with the buddhas culture buddhism uh, uh, this uh, buddhist culture right and architecture so they were so much uh, 
uh, were attracted towards the research and he has left the job from the sri lanka okay there was some dispute with the sri lankan government and he left it and he came to india and he has given the um, uh, this pali dictionary to us you know so whatever scholars who are studying today so we cannot go ahead without his dictionary so i am expressing thanks to him only so he is the founder of politex society so that time there were so many languages in india he has not found any uh, tech society except pali society the pali language was the supporter of revealing the entire history of the buddhism and he used to tell us he used to tell us he don't believe in the history explained by the indians him in his book buddhist india he writes don't believe the available text in india and he proved that hey this history you are telling about the mythological characters of the buddha my he was not a mythological person he was a human being he is the one of the person so again i am thankful to this person so so finally these are the main uh, personalities i wanted to highlight here there are so other personalities also in south india other persons are also there who have excavated the buddhist sites and brought to our notice but uh, and i'm thankful to them also but i could not uh, tell their uh, write their names because of the time constraint so this was this is what i wanted to tell about uh, the buddhist uh, art and architecture so the entire discussion is revolving around this gatha that is vandami cheti ang sab sab bathane su pati titang sari rik dhatu mahabodhi buddha roopam sakalam sada when we recite this words in a, in a in a prayer right when we venerate the buddha you say na so vandami cheti ang sab whatever cheti we have just gone through the cheti i am venerating though all the chetiyas sab bathane su pati titang all the places where the buddha's teachings are well established there also for them also i am venerating sari rik dhatu those relics of the buddha i am venerating the relics of the buddha also then i am venerating the bodhi tree also mahabodhi these all the buddha these are all the buddha roopam sakalam sada forever forever sakalam sada entire these things i am venerating vandami so this is how the the total the the total buddhist art and architecture we have studied which gives the veneration to uh, which reflects the veneration to this verse so thank you so much this subject is very very vast so i tried to compile in a short time thank you so much <clears throat> thank you siddharth sir that was a very informative session thank you yeah uh, does any questions any questions yeah. jay bhim jay you can mute yourself and ask the questions yeah so um, yes that, i would like to thank you it was very very informative session and uh, it is like eye opening kind of thing uh, i got swayed away with so uh, whatever information was shared with us and it is like um, absolutely eye opening kind of uh, information so one question i would like to ask is that sure. um, so we saw like these are our historical site um i'm sure maharashtra government must be doing something and archaeological survey of india must be doing something about it but how much efforts they are taking and is it with the goodwill they are taking the efforts to reconstruct the sites or preserve the site or are there any constraints or are there any opposition or are there any kind of you know um, um some kind of uh, disputes or internal disputes to preserve the sites along those lines i mean just i want to see i i basically want to know what are the efforts that government of india is taking to um, preserve these sites so oh, i am not authorized to answer this because uh, you know everything 
you know everything about this. There is total negligence of the preservation of soils. If you go to uh, North India now, you go around the Nalanda area, you go around the uh, Kusinara area, you will find lot of monuments, lot of mounds. No, those are needed to be excavated. The uh, Alexander Cunningham has mentioned so many, so many lineages, so many sites in report. No, unfortunately, he could not do anything, but he has mentioned it, and nobody is interested to excavate it. <clears throat> Number one. Number two, whatever sites are excavated, they are not willing to uh, reveal it or work on it. Very near to Nagpur, you know, Pawni Stupa is there. Just give an example I am giving you. Uh, so you will get your answer. Pawni Stupa is, uh, is a huge historical stupa. If you see the parts, the inscription stones are still lying there. And the donor's name, I already said it. The names of the dollars are already written there, okay? And it is it is proved that this is the Ashokan inscriptions. Still, there is a temple about that, and the temple is not they are not removing the temple. This is Jagannath Mandir, and there is a big fight in the court, and court stay okay, chalne do. It's like that. So, what to say about it? It's a very uh, not good uh, to say. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I thought so because I don't see any effort, you know, it could be on the paper, but not like in reality, something else is happening. So I, uh, I mean, it's very unfortunate for us to have those evidences and know everything about them, but we can't do anything about it because yeah. of our limited resources and limited power yeah. that we have. Yeah. It's, it's really sad. Even the available resources which are found in excavation of Ayodhya, that is, it was a socket, and so many good goods with the inscriptions and uh, yeah, that uh, columns and structures having the very beautiful art and architecture, those are destroyed. And the complaints were made to the Archaeological Survey of India, but those complaints are just kept aside. And you know what has happened there recently. But I would like to add some here. He, although, okay, the condition is very bad, okay? But still, let us go there. We must go there and venerate. Because that is our site. We should not wait there. They will reconstruct the stupa and they will go. Then we will go. Or uh, see, suppose that uh, Bhandara Leni is there. That is captured by the uh, Tukaram uh, followers, right? Tukaram Maharaj followers. The entire one of the uh, Vihara has been locked by them and they are keeping all uh, uh, domestic material there. But when they will vacate, we don't know, right? But till that time, we must go there. We must venerate the Buddha, we must venerate the stupa there. Okay. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. No, Buddha, Jai Bhim. Jai Bhim. Sir, uh, it is uh, enlightening, no doubt. It is yeah. enlightening. The more and more we study uh, history, whether it's history of science, whether it's history of uh, architecture, we find Buddha's presence. And uh, the beautiful thing I'm taking home from your presentation is the Western scholars are becoming so bold and candid in saying they don't believe any other things because they are infodemic. That is misinformation and disinformation about Buddha. That is one uh, beautiful take home I'm taking from your presentation. Yeah. And with regard to the previous uh, learned speaker, you know, I mean, uh, a listener, she raised with the issue, but I don't agree with that. What I want to say, you have been telling in all the slides, we must may own these, you know, artifacts, so that we visit, we look into them, and uh, unless we make the community enable to take care of itself for the Buddhist uh, tradition heritage, uh, why do we expect government? And uh, see, government, as Jefferson rightly pointed out, 
that government is a necessary evil. You choose how much you want. And people who want to make their uh, end, you know, aims and objectives, they do it. But what is happening to our community? We, community, we, we spend so much of money on constructing some other things, you see. Not search uh, what are the Buddhist artifacts. I mean, that's one uh, pathetic situation, you see. You spend money as we know for our own good uh, understanding and reasoning. So what I want to conclude yeah. by saying, that unless this uh, enlightenment uh, presentations and architecture of Buddhism or Buddhism as a philosophy reaches the youngest of the young, you know, uh, in a very early age, that way Anna is doing wonderful work, you know, igniting yeah. the minds with yeah. Buddha and Ambedkar. When we breathe Buddha and Ambedkar, the solution has started. Then it will really, you see, make, uh, unless you have power, you cannot have respect. How is the power possible? I remember one minister in Karnataka, Basalinga Paji, who started People's Science uh, Society with uh, Dr. Ambedkar. He said simply, if you accept a middleman for your salvation, you are lost. If that is kindled in younger, younger generation, then your uh, such uh, presentations become uh, missiles, you know, become uh, non-violent missiles to, um, to destroy the uh, mindlessness and uh, go towards mindfulness. That's what Arahant always was you know, uh, uh, struggling and gave us a way out. I want to thank you, sir. I'm sorry for taking so much of your time. Thank you. Thank and, you, sir. Thank uh, you. Your presentation should be made a part of the curriculum, at least in our children and in wherever we have the domain. I think once a threshold point is reached, uh, no government can stop. No info, infodemic. Infodemic is defined as uh, misinformation and disinformation. I'm a WHO uh, infodemic uh, manager now. And I simply move to the advertisements. That's the weapon I have. Yeah. Such things, if children yeah. start doing all the yeah. misinformation and disinformation about Buddha, I went with my children in one Belur, you know, historical place. They say uh, Buddha is the avatar of Vishnu. You see, one day they will make uh, JV also an avatar of Vishnu. How to come out of this unless we you see, impregnate uh, mindfulness among the younger generation and especially the, the tiny minds who are battling? Yeah. I want to yeah. thank Anna for a wonderful. Uh, uh, opportunity and since it is in the YouTube, the best of the technology as a space scientist, I can tell you yeah. the recordings of this will go a long way. Only thing is you should do a priority on that. Thank you very much, AB. Thank you. One point I wanted to add uh, on this, uh, uh, your sir, Jagannath sir, he, uh, our responsibility is to learn Pali and also inscriptions. Why I'm telling, I will give you the example of South India. Just have visited the Bhatti Pol Stupa, Bhatti Prolu in South India, right? Near uh, Guntur, right? So there we found the inscriptions and on that reading the inscriptions by other people, other you say any N X Y Z person, they have read they have read that he, the, the written the, the script was he, the uh, Kubiroko Raja along with uh, his uh, daughter and uh, son and wife donated this uh, particular relics along with the jewelry because the relics has to be give, uh, kept with the jewelry right the gems and jewelry and that was written right so this person was declaring in the uh, what you called google ki now this stupa has been created by the kuber that is the mythological figure because kuber is a precious having a lot of property and this so therefore these precious stones are here so see the contradiction. If I know the inscription, how to read it and know the Pali also, then only I can I tell him that ki, this is the correct in the, uh, explanation or uh, this is the correct statement. So, so yeah, many I, I, inscriptions I, I, are read wrongly. No, I fully agree with you, sir. That's why I'm making my Herculean effect, uh, effort, hopelessly hopeful effort of learning Pali through Marathi, thanks to Anna. And you know, yeah. family. Great, and, great. See, what I, I so want nice. to add, just uh, as Kubera you mentioned, you know, Kubera in mythological forum is the yeah. person who gives loan to Venkateshwar, a large Venkateshwar. Yeah. And with a small uh, infodemic, you know, that when Kubera asks uh, Lord Venkateshwara, how are you going to give back the money and why do you require money? Venkateshwara, it seems he said, I want money for marrying Mahalakshmi. Mahalakshmi is the yeah. god of uh, wealth. He says, Why are you wanting loan to marry her? 
Then uh, how are you going to repay back? Then uh, it seems Lord Venkateshwara told Kubera, don't worry Kubera, in Kali Yug, my followers will pay back you the loan. So that's why even today, when somebody from the villages go to Tirupati, they give, give me, take this 10 rupees and put to Lord Venkateshwara's fund because it has to go to Kubera. Hmm. This is how the misinformation and disinformation is going yeah. on in Indian myth. Unfortunately, they want to tag on Buddha also to this. This is the greatest, uh, you know, leaving threat that you can anticipate. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jagannath. I see uh, Vaishali Tai has a question. Vaishali Tai. Vivek has raised the hand. Hello, 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 yeah. uh, Labha, many sadhuvat for this wonderful presentation and gratitude. Please uh, oh, yeah, give yeah. one example of Uddesika Stupa. Uddesika Stupa, okay. Oh. Best example is the Stupa, which is at uh, Diksha Bhumi. That's a recent example. The Uddesika is the commemorative Stupa. Is that the particular episode, very big, important episode has taken place. That is the giving the Dhamma Diksha. The ancient example we'll give, uh, that's a Sarnath Stupa, where the first Dhamma Chakka Pavattan has been done there. That is Sarnath Stupa. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Vivek, sir, you have a question. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you for, uh, thank you very much uh, for such a wonderful uh, presentation and the information you put forward and the differences that you explained about the caves and the lanies. Uh, I did not realize it until uh, you put, uh, you bring it to this uh, forum. So I was, I just recently completed the visit to India and uh, I visited many lanies you know, from uh, Kaniri Caves to Gandharpal in Mahad to Ajanta in Verud. And I have seen such a, uh, tragic incidences where the destruction of these uh, lanes uh, have been done. And there's very little done by the government uh, to maintain it. Mm. And uh, also the other thing I noticed, the kind of information has been given to the locals. These lanes are like, uh, have been renamed as the Pandav lanes and they were constructed you know, overnight uh, for the monks. So I'm just trying to see, you know, what way our community, you know, as a Buddhist community can uh, offer some form of education, you know, to avoid any distortion of the history. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to see your uh, perspectives. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have one uh, Leni Samvardhan committee here, Leni Samvardhan Samiti. They visit the uh, places and... Uh, try to clean it and make the awareness to the people. Uh, they go by groups and uh, do the veneration and give the lectures or give the information to those and villagers also. Uh, recently, uh, we have, I have specifically myself, uh, in the Kolhapur, there was a dispute uh, on the, uh, this uh, Pohai Leni. Pohai is the name of the village. And they, it was that stupa also venerated uh, that worship like a Shivlinga. And I presented the research paper on that in a Pracha Vidya Parishad, Pune, in their presence with the evidences. And nobody could uh, cross my uh, research paper. Uh, you know what? Who, um, they were all uh, a particular community people, I will say. Not a name. I will not take the name. So we are, we are, we are supposed to try at the level best. And they have stopped by worshipping uh, this uh, Shivlinga, that stupa. And the other thing uh, I have noticed, like uh, particularly in the Gandharpal, where uh, at Mahad, mm. you know, mm. there was so much uh, damage, you know, like uh, the severe railing. damage. Yeah. yeah, severe damage, the the railings are broken, you know, it's very dangerous for to really unsafe. Really climb, you know, to the upper uh, part of this uh, mountain, you know, and visit and worship, worship the lanes, you know, that's pretty dangerous. And also there's a lot of littering, you know, uh, no cleanliness, the lanes, uh, the the chetes, you know, at the entrance, there are a lot of uh, 
mess around, you know, the locals mm. or even the Samit is not maintaining it. Mm. So, yeah, it's pretty sad. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, but it's beautiful to visit. You know, I I would recommend you know yeah. all yeah. the community members to visit uh, and uh, really experience the experiences. You know, when you uh, the way they have constructed, you know, uh, during the ancient time, and that's really mesmerizing. Yeah. Doctor Shikal, please. Uh, so much gratitude for you, sir, for coming on this online forum and uh, what excellent, excellent presentation. Uh, okay. Sorry uh, for the limited time uh, you got today, but uh, sir, I would definitely want to invite you again for a session dedicated on this uh, art and ar architecture and we can go through uh, Ashokan um, architecture as well. Okay. Uh, my question is, sir, um, you mentioned if you can go back on that uh, slides on the Ramabhar Stupa and you said, uh, you mentioned there that uh, this is the place of cremation. Uh, so is this the same as Mukutbandan Chaitya, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm very sorry. That name is uh, by mistake. I have taken Rama. It's a Mukutbandan Stupa. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so now... Thank you for we, correction. Oh, no, sir. I was just like confused, right? Uh, yeah, sure. uh, so thanks for that, sir. And uh, yeah. so the correct um, Chaitya is, is, you said like it's two kilometer uh, away from the place we visit now, where is the Parinibban, yeah. uh, uh, that's stupa. stupa there. So it's a two kilometers away from there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate Welcome. your talk and uh, it Thank was you. excellent, excellent presentation. I'm not uh, good in English, so I could not make, you, no, make it, it fluent. <laughs> no, sir, it was very well presented. So thank you so much. Thank you. Tom Shinde has raised his hand. Uh, yes, Tom. hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my question will be: uh, since uh, the conditions of uh, various two paths, uh, that is various archaeological site, in particular Buddhist one, gets talked about, uh, is the professionalism and the ethic of archaeological survey of India questionable or of dubious value? Yes, of course. Oh. Say again, Can uh, I get it? Policy. Yeah, yeah, I understood. But uh, when, when whatever you complain to them, uh, they take and they acknowledge you, but uh, they will not uh, take action on that. They are definitely answerable for that, but uh, the condition is not favorable to us. Ask means the Buddhist oh, sites. No, the question essentially is: I would like you to articulate in context of uh, uh, their professionalism and ethic. It is questionable or even dubious. Is it? Is that your perspective and opinion? I just... <laughs> and not, if I yes, then give... how much? And I can't uh, reply that. I'm sorry for that. Uh, do you believe that the organizations are pretty ethical and professional, although they are not give, replying to you, still they can be considered as professional and ethical? Do you believe in that? Yeah, partly. They, have, they, they are professional, but they have their limitations. Okay, all right. So their yeah, hands are yeah. tied, but they are pretty ah, professional. And ethical. That I mean to say, I could not say like that, but uh, their hands are tied. They are very, very limited resources. They can't go beyond that. Are their hands tight in certain ways? Do they have, are their hands tight? I would, I I would use portions? the word limitations. Limitations, I would <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. In uh, comparison okay. with other organizations globally, uh, hmm. you know, uh, because you, these, organ, these, uh, in, these locations, so many of these locations are not just governed by Archaeological Survey of India. They are also governed by UNESCO, right? So uh, UNESCO, when uh, you know, um, when somebody kind of uh, makes a point about uh, an institution like Archaeological Survey of India, then they are also making a point about UNESCO, right? Mm. So uh, you know, so you know, when uh, because it's like a team, right? Like uh, UNESCO and uh, Archaeological Survey of India must be you know uh, working in unison uh, in uh, you know these at these sites. So just wondering as to whether you know. Uh, whether uh, these um, kind of uh, 
um you know kind of points that are uh, you know made many times that uh, these institutions uh, uh, turn a blind eye you're trying to say that they turn a blind eye towards your complaint is that so sir mm, yeah okay they turn the blind eye to your complaints okay yeah. but uh, uh, that doesn't does that necessarily imply that uh, uh, these organizations are unethical or uh, unprofessional no i don't say that okay great 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 oh, so got the perspective basically so what you, uh, i i got a clarity of what with these questions and uh, your replies to that thank you thank you uh, next uh, we have panthak bhalchakram हाँ जय भीम नव मुद्दा है सर इट वॉज अ वेरी नाइस एंड इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच सर आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क द मीनिंग ऑफ द पांडु रंग इन पाली लैंग्वेज एंड यू मे ऑल्सो मेन्शन संत तुकार महाराज प्रेइंग ऑन सम लेनीज एंड अवर पंडित मन अवर मंदिर इन पंडरपुर इज ऑल्सो आई थिंक इट्स अ बुद्धिश शिरीन Yeah, or or yeah. buddhist so it's a what kind of uh, coming under the uh, buddhist shrine or uh, stoop no i have not studied uh, to be very honest uh, uh, this uh, pandarpur uh, vithal mandir you are talking i have not studied up to this level ki i make concrete statement on that first thing they they uh, they have hidden the main sculptures and all that so uh, i cannot make the com comment on that now your uh, and second question was regarding uh, panduranga right so panduranga yeah. uh, the name pandu is uh, white uh, ranga is uh, color so white color is a panduranga and uh, the second name is a lotus panduranga is uh, also substitute name for lotus in pali language thank you sir sorry sorry uh, we have kishor mr kishor jadhav do you want to ask the question yeah yeah uh, thank yeah. you sir uh, excellent presentation jaivin sir jaivin uh, do you have any idea about bhon uh, uh, in bullana district yes yes uh, can you uh, please highlight something on that bhon stupa is a ardan stupa it is made from, for a clay is a structural stupa and uh, i think it is now completely vanished bhon stupa is near buldana right yeah yeah correct correct yeah correct, it correct, is correct. A, a well, well registered under uh, asi okay sir but i heard like uh, government is planning to have some dam there i don't know is it uh, is it correct Uh, dam, uh, I don't know about the dam, but it is quite possible. I, I will not get surprised for that. Okay, okay, okay. Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah, yeah. because that uh, bone stupa is uh, uh, almost uh, it is destroyed. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else want to ask the questions? Um, um sorry i i couldn't find the raise hand button but uh, not the question but i just want to make comment uh the comment is because i don't want every one of us go with the notion that government should not be responsible um uh, because mr jagannath said like you know we shouldn't be making government responsible i mean he didn't say directly but um but my point is the government is the representation of people right and whatever we want we cannot do directly we have the representation in government that is why point is we should have the political um resources to put our point across and government is absolutely responsible for protecting the religion or religious belief or any practices they want to do like the people's um, practices or the government religious belief and there when we have the evidences like the strong evidences archaeological evidences it becomes the responsibility of the government of course it is the responsibility of people as well to promote and propagate our um, you know our religion but it also becomes the responsibility and i don't want every one of us to go with the notion that no we have to do by our, everything by ourselves no we have to make the government accountable accountable as well because 
it becomes the responsibility of government to allow people to propagate their religion and protect their history and protect their archaeological uh, sites. Um, I mean, it's just the comment that I wanted to make to, you know, every one of us go with, you know, so have the power to m motivate people to have political resources as well. Yeah, I fully agree with you and uh, no dispute on that. But can you imagine 75 years of freedom, Manwad, what uh, J. Bhim wanted uh, untouchables to touch the water. Today, after 75 years, Amrut Mahotsa, a girl is beaten to almost death for touching water in the village. If it can happen in India, uh, what kind of, uh, sort of accountability you want to fix on government? That's the question. We have to definitely fix an accountability, but but for the uh, Supreme Court today, the vaccination wouldn't have been free. If there is climate change or a Buddhist architecture, it is a threshold point of younger generation and learned people like us saying, no, use your moot button to you know, finish the infodemic. But then misinformation, disinformation is what I want to say. I fully agree with you. Thank you. Yeah, I think everyone is done with the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So I would uh, very much want to thank sir, Labhani, sir. Speech on this. Sir, uh, I want to uh, tell oh. you, sir, that I agreed with that uh, archaeological survey of India. However, but uh, they are uh, not giving any response to anyone and our uh, sculptures are lying everywhere without protection. Yeah. Such as a pony that you have given one example, yeah. that a pony, that all our sculptures, they are lying and uh, local people, they are sitting down there and uh, misusing also like this same thing. Yeah, it is going on. But nobody is properly taking care and uh, archaeological survey of India really that uh, not doing anything for that purpose. Only is the very good place sir, for, uh, for this purpose. And another thing that is Sravasti also nearby Jetwan, uh, and that another uh, ashram is there. Uh, there is also one Asokan pillar is there. It was broken and it was converted into shivling. That villagers yeah. are going and performing puja. But archaeological survey of doing nothing. Simply yeah. they put their board. Okay, this is Ashokan pillar. Yeah. Something is required to be make complaint to the archaeological survey of India. Yeah, the are made. Uh -huh. But nothing uh, so, is happening. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, people, uh, local people, they are openly coming and saying that uh, this is in the Hinduism. Shivling. They have converted like this only. And that place is also not protected properly. Archaeological survey of India is already fully aware. Hmm. <coughs> but uh, they are it's not doing it. I appreciate it. Also, same thing is happening. So, so uh, Mr. Bhima, you mentioned yes. a reasonable point over there. Uh, when he says that, you know, that uh, there was this structure which got broken and then it was converted into you know, uh, uh, kind of shifting and all. And that's a very reasonable point, I mean. But, you know, like any event that occurs, now, uh, every event that, uh, you know, that occurs, any um, kind of inadvertent event, you know, it has either, you know, like in healthcare, if somebody gets a disease, we call it as, you know, either it has a host factor or agent factor or environmental factor. Now, like, you know, this uh, particular pillar broke down because of environmental factor. And then uh, because of the, location you know um you can't really stop people and then you know they just came and you know and anyway the 
pillar has broken down so people started you know people went on to make it uh, kind of uh, uh, you know kind of shivling which is uh, in our perspective it uh, was absolutely unacceptable but then you know it was probably a helpless situation so um, where is the you know uh, how do we find the uh, kind of balance or uh, balanced approach in uh, or a reasonable approach in uh, uh, kind of uh, putting blame absolutely uh towards the uh, archaeological survey of india and uh, you know like uh, is there like you know uh, uh, is it like uh, all or nothing principle uh, with which we evaluate an organization like uh, uh, archaeological survey of india like you know if uh, good things are happening then uh, it's fine but uh, uh, anything that goes wrong regardless of whether uh, uh, it is in the realm of control of uh, archaeological survey of india uh, we Ought to or we are pretty reasonable to blame archaeological survey of India. What is your perspective on that? We can keep on pursuing, and we are we are we are uh, we are supposed to play uh, pile the cases in the court. For example, uh, uh, some places uh, like Pawani Stupa, uh, we people went to the court. and still there there we are fighting although we are given so many evidences and second sir you do the evidence sir yeah of the spot yeah with the evidence with the evidence <coughs> still the cases are not moving further because of political pressure and they make it as a sensitive issue that is tancha bhavna dukhavtat magere but uh, in one case i am telling the some positive example Uh, Kaneri Lane uh, in the Bori Valley, Mumbai, right? So there, every year Mahashivratri uh, at the time of Mahashivratri, the people used to worship those stupa as a shivlinga, and thousands of people used to go there as a jatra. But uh, the our people came came together along with some our Bhanteji monks, and uh, we used to uh, request them, "Hey, see, this is not the." Uh, this is not the um, shivlinga this is the stupa and we have displayed the board we have highlighted the boards ki this is the history of uh, the leni and this is the history of the stupa so people started fighting with us but slowly with the pursuit of local police station and with the communication with the archaeological survey of india one year two year the, the people uh, their people the, the worshiping people started coming lower and lower and finally now nobody comes there before one day of the mahashivratri about 1000 people go there and have a get to get sort of a, a, what you called discussion or puja veneration sort of thing uh, sir uh, at kaneri yeah. mostly our people every Purnima day, they are gathered yeah. and taking the Buddha puja and some speeches or yeah. some uh, small functions are conducted every uh, every Purnima. Yeah. Uh, and uh, day by day. So that are, is the good sign, actually. Uh, uh, yes. But at some places, very very bad position. That yeah. I have not seen that uh, at Andheri. Some uh, some lane is there, but that is also captured by Hindi. Yeah. yeah. Now those are angles, totally angles, yeah. lost. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is. Okay. I think that was a very discussion uh, among the team, and uh, uh, as Shital Tai said that we can again uh, have Mr. Labane sir. Uh, and we can again have a discussion on the Maurya structures, so we can again continue the questions uh, question answer session. Yeah, and uh, thank I wanted to thank you, Lavanya sir, for your profound wisdom and uh, delivering such an informative talk on the Buddhist arts, arts and architecture. Your expertise in the topic was truly inspiring. Uh, we sincerely appreciate your contribution to today's Vihara session. Thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Namo Buddha. And wishes of uh, Jest Purnima. Today is a Jest Purnima. Wish good wishes to all. Thank you.
thank you for giving opportunity to me on this platform ana is doing well going well all the best thank you thanks to ana and to siddharth for the minute thank you thank 